Tribal officials say they have a treaty with the U.S. government ensuring they can have an official representing them, but it has never been done before. It reads, it is stipulated that they shall be entitled to a delegate in the House of Representatives. If seated, she would have a voice, though no vote in Washington. I think the time is right for the Cherokee Nation to make the demand of the United States that it fulfill its commitment made so very long ago. When I was a kid, this was all dirt road. And it wasn't even dirt road, it was big rocks. I'm Kimberly Teehee. I was born in Chicago. My parents moved there as part of a federal relocation program. And we moved back to Oklahoma when I was probably first or second grade. We're standing on the Teehee Cherokee restricted land allotment. And it's the land where I would come and visit my grandma and grandpa regularly. I get asked questions about why I do what I do. This is it because as I grew up and became more knowledgeable about federal policy, about policies relating to land, about boarding schools, about assimilation, acculturation. And I realized so much of my own personal life and history is intertwined with that policy. I spent nearly 12 years where I oversaw the Congressional Native American Caucus. Indians are finding people because of a lot of the history that we've had to retain for ourselves and we persevere as a result of it. There's a lot of issues, as you well know, and I've only touched the surface of what's pending in Congress right now, but again, I encourage you to stay active. And I got a call out of the blue one day at work and it was from the White House. I appointed Kimberly Teehee of the Cherokee Nation as my Native American policy advisor. One of the most influential Native American women today, Ms. Teehee sits on President Obama's Domestic Policy Council. I will never forget where I come from. It oftentimes inspires me to do what I'm doing now. It is personal for me. I believe being seated in Congress would be another way for me to have a voice so that we could not have those horrible policies of the past occur again. The relationship between the Indian nations and the United States in the early 19th century was very rocky. The United States had great ambitions to expand beyond the Appalachian Mountains and uh, into the Midwest and the, and the South. The thing that stood in their way was Indians. The Cherokee Nation, um, in a sense, was like all the other tribes. They were being subjected to this enormous pressure to, to be moved. And so an unauthorized group of Cherokees executed a treaty with the United States in 1835 and ultimately made to move from their homes in Georgia, North Carolina, Tennessee, to Oklahoma. But the Treaty of New Echota was unique. There was a provision that the Cherokees could send a delegate to the Congress in order to be represented. I think the time is right for the Cherokee Nation to raise this issue, to invoke the treaty, and to make the demand of the United States that it fulfill its commitment to the Cherokee Nation made so very long ago. We are in Albuquerque, New Mexico, attending the 76th Annual National Congress of American Indians Conference. Cherokee Nation is here advancing a resolution on delegate to the U.S. House of Representatives. We have a resolution that will be voted on, and so we feel good about it. I feel like we're on the right path to victory. I feel like what we're doing is righteous. Because of your experience in helping all of Indian country and all the work that you've done, we couldn't think of a better person to be in this position. Please join in welcoming Chief Hoskins. Over 180 years ago, the United States, based on a treaty, imposed on the Cherokee Nation grave injury to the Cherokee people and our institutions, just as the United States has imposed hardship and suffering at some point in history onto every tribe represented here today. 184 years later, we are turning the tables. So with the unanimous support of the Council of the Cherokee Nation. I have named Kim Teehee as the first Cherokee Nation delegate to the House of Representatives.
are bearing witness. This is the original document, the Treaty of New Echota of 1835. It reads, it is stipulated that they shall be entitled to a delegate in the House of Representatives of the United States whenever Congress shall make provision for the same. The execution of this document led to about a quarter of our population, mostly elders and children, who died on that trail while they were being forcibly removed. The bad stuff didn't end there. I mean, our people were not only displaced from their homes, they had no possessions. We literally had to rebuild a nation. We talk about this document, but we don't ever see it. I don't want to ever forget either. Hey everybody, I'm Soledad O'Brien. This week on Matter of Fact, representation matters. Cherokee Nation is taking the U.S. government up on a promise it made nearly 200 years ago. And now they could have a delegate in the House of Representatives. What does a delegate specifically do? What any other delegate does in Congress, introduce legislation, amend legislation, vote in committee, uh, speak to legislation on the House floor, can't vote on the House floor if we use the U.S. territory template. You've been appointed, which makes it sound like it's a done deal, mm -hmm. but it's in fact not a done deal. Right. In fact, Congress, uh, the government has to honor mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. treaty. That's correct. Are there obstacles to that? Do you think it's going to happen, or do you think there are going to be some challenges? I am optimistic, but the questions are, how do we get it done? I call this current time the work period. Even though these documents are old documents, they still live. It just like the U.S. Constitution still lives. It's old. It's old. But it's valid. But it's valid. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Chief Hoskin and Kimberly Tihi will be watching this. Thanks so much for coming Thank in to so talk much. to me. Thank you so much. You bet. I don't think there's a lot of debate about the issue of whether or not the Cherokee Nation is entitled to have a delegate to Congress because I think the treaty promise is clear. I think there are a lot of questions about how to make that happen, but that's not extremely intimidating to me because in Indian country, we're always the round peg in the square hole. There is no history about how to appoint a member of an Indian tribe to a seat in the House. We have lots of similar models that we can look at and say this has been the legal mechanisms that have been used in the past, but they're an imperfect fit. So I think it's going to be breaking some new ground with members of the House to get this accomplished. I don't see a reason why we shouldn't keep going down the non-voting right. delegate path. I just think that we should not be so wedded to the U.S. territory mechanism verbatim. Right. Speaker Pelosi isn't just going to seat whoever she wants. No, she can't. She'll so her, her authorities to seat a delegate lie in her ability to propose to the House rules. Right. So through the House rules, right. she can offer right. to seat a delegate, but the House has to agree to it. Right. We have treaties that were ratified by the Senate, signed by the President, mm -hmm. so therefore the supreme law of the land, no court or Congress has ever invalidated those provisions. So therefore, in my opinion, we could argue the Senate has already acted. Right. Only the House needs to act now, right. albeit nearly 200 years later. I think getting seated as a delegate to the House of Representatives is a priority for me because I have worked on Capitol Hill for so long. I know the people. I feel like if we don't get it done now in my time with Cherokee Nation, it might not happen. I know she was in D.C. for about 20 years, and until she got the Obama position, she heard from Obama today, said if she needed any help, call on him. I thought that was cute. <laughs> you know, it's exciting. We're just hopeful that in the future, it's going to work out. I think we do need uh, a spokesperson. We need a, an advocate for the American Indians, especially the Cherokees. But I hope she does get approved. I'm proud for her, very proud for her.